Welcome back to The Freedom Ticket. In this module, we're gonna be talking about one of the most important things that you can think about when you're starting your business, and that's selling your business. That's because when you sell your business, it's probably when you're gonna make the most money, not when you're running the business. And so a lot of people, they, they, they don't think about this when they first start. It's later on when they get tired of it or they see an oppor another opportunity or something comes along that they're like, oh, maybe I should sell my business. And initially, you're just trying to quit working for the man and start your own company and work for yourself and, and make a little bit of money. But if you start with the right mindset, with one day, maybe a, as soon as a year from now, maybe five years from now, maybe 10 years from now, I want to sell this thing because I know that's when I'm going to make the most money. You're building an asset here and you're not just building a cash flow machine to pay your bills and pay your mortgage and take the nice trips and pay for your kid's education. You're actually building an asset. And if you start with that mindset of building an asset from day one and make decisions along the way of growing your business based around that, you're going to make so much more money, potentially millions of dollars more than you ever would have any, in any other way. Cash flow is important like we talked about in the last module and super important. And hopefully you had a chance to do uh, Arnold's spreadsheet to help you with the cash flow. In this module, I'm gonna be showing you uh, in some of the additional sections down below, uh, a couple of spreadsheets that'll give you an idea of what you need to do to actually reach your goal. So maybe your goal is, uh, I wanna exit my company for $3 million. That's my, my ultimate goal is if I had $3 million in the bank, three years from now, I would be set. What do you need to do to achieve that goal? And so I'm gonna show you a spreadsheet that will show you how to figure out, okay, if these are my basic numbers and margins, and uh, that's my goal, how many products do I need to have? How, what do I need to have? You're reversing this, you're starting with the end in mind, and how do I get to that end? Not just going from the beginning and like, okay, eventually there'll be an end. You're starting with that end in mind and working backwards, and that's critical. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that will give you a basic idea of what you need to be planning to do. And then also, how much money do you need to make in the meantime? Maybe you're like, I need 80 grand a year to pay my bills. So that 80 grand, how, what do I need to do just to, to meet that? I'm going to show you that in a spreadsheet too. But when, you're, when you start your business, you always want to deplete to, to thinking about the day you're going to sell it. Because that's when you're going to make about or 70% of all the profit is the day you sell. And you may be saying, Kevin, why would I sell my business if it's profitable? Why, that, that would be stupid. I want to pass this down to my kids. And that's okay. Maybe you want to have a, create a legacy and pass this on to your kids and, and they can have a job. Uh, but what if you could actually build this business to where they can do what the hell, hell they want and they don't have to have a job where they're just trying to make money? So maybe you're asking yourself, why would I sell my business, Kevin? I mean, if it's making me money, why the heck would I sell it? I want to, I want to build this business and pass it on to my kids, create a legacy. That's okay. You can give your kids a job if you want. But the, if you start with, with the end in mind of selling this business, that's where you're going to make the true money. It's, it's by selling the business. If you recall back in the, uh, one of the earlier episodes, I talked about my friends David and Leah Cups. They started their business and they've sold four of them now. So they, they've stair-stepped up. They've, if they kept running their first business, it might be at $10 million now. And they might be making you know, a couple hundred grand a, month, a year. Uh, in their profit, in their pocket, and, and having a, a good life. But because they built their first business, sold it for four, four million, sold the next one for seven, sold the next one for 11, 12, and, and then 15, and so on, they've they've built generational wealth uh, for themselves that they couldn't have done if they just kept running the business in a linear fashion. And so that's why you want to start to think about selling the business from day one. So everything you need to be doing needs to be for growth. So how what can I do? If what, what's the minimum I can take out? to keep this thing, this thing snowballing so I can sell it for maximum value. You need to allocate time for actually planning your exit. So it needs to be part of your weekly schedule. Like what have I, what have I done this week, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, what have I done this week that's contributing to my future exit? And by doing that, you're just gonna make your chances of, of, of changing your life and your family's life so much, so much more. There's a lot of things too with, with taxes when it comes to selling a business you know on, there's lower taxes in some states and some areas on capital gains you know there's there's certain rules that if you when you first if you do things right when you first set up the business within the first 30 days literally within the first 30 days if it's day 31 you missed the opportunity but within the first 30 days you do certain things with the IRS your first 10 million dollars of capital gains when you exit is tax free tax free if you don't do that 
you might be paying, depending on where you live, you live in California, you might be paying $5 million of that $10 million in taxes. It's crazy how much money you'd be leaving on the table. So you got to think about this from day one. It doesn't matter where you live. If you live in the U.S., you have an advantage. It's easier to sell. But whether you live in Europe or wherever it may be, you may sell it to a big private equity company. You may sell it to an aggregator. You may sell it to a strategic investor. You may sell it to somebody on Flippa.com uh, you know, for a few hundred thousand bucks. Whatever it is, if you, if you prepare from day one, it's going to make a huge difference. Now, when you sell your company, sometimes they'll give you the money up front. So let's say you sell the company. It's usually what's called a multiple. So it, it's based on, uh, on your SDE. So it's based, based on your discretionary, your earners, your discretionary income, basically, your SDE, seller's discretionary income. And so that's based on like your, your profit margin plus what's called addbacks. And addbacks could be things like your salary, could be things like if you went to a conference, things that another owner might not be uh, going to spend. Uh, so those get added back and that creates your bottom line kind of profit or SDE. And then there's a, usually a multiple of that and it can vary from one to as much as five or 10 X that multiple. And that's usually how businesses are evaluated. So for example, if you're selling a million dollars worth of, of product on Amazon at gross volume, gross sales, and let's say you have SDE of you're, you're doing the numbers right and you got about 20% bottom line profit, like I was saying, so roughly 200,000. And let's just say that's your SDE. Someone might come in and buy that business right now in today's market for anywhere from 400,000 to $800,000, depending on a, a, bunch, a number of factors. Well, that's cash in your pocket. Instead of you having to wait four years to make $200,000 a year and probably have to reinvest some of that, all of a sudden you got this big hit of cash in your pocket. And you can take that, pay off some bills, take a nice vacation, save some away, and then now you got a hundred grand or two hundred grand or whatever to start your next round and do this again and it's step and repeat. And you can do do really, really well uh, by by doing that. And so that's something you got to keep in mind um, is what can what where do I need to be and what I need to be on my ratios and my growth patterns to, to actually do this. And you always want to sell when you're on an upward spiral. You never want to sell when you're flatlined or you're down. So most buyers want to see that there's growth potential. They, they want to see what can we do, what, what, what opportunities are there if we come in here and throw some money on this, throw some gas on, on this fire? What can we do to explode this? So they always want to see that. And a lot of times we're really good, us, us me and you and other people like us are good at starting something. But once it gets to five million or ten million dollars in sales, which is not super hard to do on Amazon, to be honest, it, it it's another animal. You start dealing with structures and corporations and layers of management and all these processes and systems. And we're entrepreneurs. We're like down in the dirt uh, digging and getting our fingers uh, dirt under our fingernails, and that's what we like to do. We don't like to be messing with all this other stuff. So sometimes we're really good at getting it to a certain level, and it takes a different type of management or a different type of person to take it to the next level. And so that's when it's best you know, to sell it. But growth, like I said, it's, it's essential for when you're going to sell. So you always want to sell when you're on the ups, upswing. You always want to, from day one, create a document vault. Because when you go to sell, the buyers are going to want like every little piece of paper, every agreement you made with everybody, every little piece of paper that, that you did. So you're going to want to create this document vault where you're saving like everything. And you can set this up from the beginning so it's like a special file, special file cabinet online, special Google uh, storage where you, you're keeping all these special documents, every little trademark document, every little agreement you made with an independent supplier who has the rights to the photos. Because if you don't do this from day one, when you go to sell, you're going to be spending a month or two months of your time just scrambling around trying to figure this stuff out and find it. Because a, a good buyer is going to want to see all that to, to cover their ass. Um, diverse, diversification and your size does matter when you go to sell. So the smaller you are, the less the multiple usually. Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon. Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đăng ký brand với USBTO, từ khai lâm thêm, từ chân dồn scout, lớn tích và warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé. The bigger you are, the higher the multiple uh, that, that you're going to get for when you sell. There's, you can sell your business at any level. You know, even if you get it to only $50,000 a year, you could sell that on sites like Flippa or, or something. There's brokerage companies like Quiet Light Brokerage is one of the better ones that's out there uh, that can help you sell your businesses uh, uh, when it comes to that time and, and put you in front of uh, potential buyers and they help you organize everything and, and make it, make the, the documents to actually present to the buyers and help in the negotiations and all that stuff. Um, diversification, some people say, well, should I just be all on Amazon or should I be selling 
on Walmart and TikTok shop and other places, is that going to make a difference? Yes and no. To some buyers, it makes a big difference. They love to see diversification, not all your eggs in one basket. Others don't care. They just, all they want, that's your Amazon business. And they really care about your business or your company. They just want to buy your assets. All they care about your ASINs and your products. They're just going to buy those and they don't care about the company name. That you, you keep that. We don't care about King Industries. We just want uh, your, your dog bowls and they'll just buy, they'll just buy assets out of it. Uh, so those kinds of things can happen as, as well. Um, to, when you're looking to, to sell long term, you want to make sure you're basically using accrual accounting methods. Everything's going to be evaluated by accrual accounting. Uh, and you want to make sure that uh, you're doing monthly forecasting. That's going to help you when, when a buyer comes in. It's going to help you, one, reach your targets. And second, it's when a buyer comes in, they can see that, okay, this is where it's going. And so if we, we come in, at least he's already got a plan or she's already got a plan for this. And we know if we do this, this, and this, and with our resources and our connections, we can blow this thing up. It's going to make it much more attractive. You have maybe multiple people bidding on, on your product. Um, you, you want to also make sure that everything is clean when it comes to your legal documents, when it comes to your bank accounts. You have separate bank accounts. You're not commingling funds. If you have multiple brands, try to keep those in separate bank accounts. Each, each one has its own unique bank account. You could have a master clearing account, but then you have separate bank accounts where all the transactions uh, and, and expenses are going out of. Uh, make sure, in some cases, you may even want to set up legal entities that are separate. Have a holding company, uh, that's your main company, uh, King, King Industries. And, uh, and then under that is uh, Pets, King Pets and King Sports and King uh, uh, Supplements or whatever. Each one is separate with separate bank accounts and separate audit trails and separate everything. Uh, separate, even separate seller accounts. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it cleaner. You could have everything in one seller central account on Amazon, but if you have them in separate accounts, uh, then that can keep it cleaner and, and makes it easier to sell and to, to audit as well. You always want to understand your buyer's perspective. Why are they buying this business? What are they planning on doing with it? Um, businesses that, um, and you got to know when is the right time to sell. And sometimes you're like, ah, is this the right time? Should I wait two years from now? You'll know, you'll have a gut feeling when the right time to sell is. And sometimes the right time to sell is is when things are really good, but they're not great yet. It's like right before that cusp is for it blows up, and especially if you can actually retain some equity. So a lot of times when you sell, if you sell, back in this case of a, if you're doing a million dollars a year in gross sales, $200,000 SDE or profit, and let's say someone's going to come in and give you half a million bucks for that. They're probably not going to give you the whole $500,000 up front. They're going to give you... A portion of that maybe 70 80 percent of that and typically so you might get let's say four hundred thousand dollars of that and then the other hundred thousand dollars is going to be what's called an earnout. and a lot of times they'll want you to stay around for for a few months or maybe six months uh and just help them with the transition and that is if everything goes well and you meet certain targets a year from now or two years from now then you get the rest of that hundred thousand in some cases you can negotiate that you get even more in some cases, you can even hold uh, retain equity. You know, the guys that sold helium that started Helium 10 uh, when they sold this company, they started in 2016. I knew the guys back then. They sold it in uh, 2019 and had a big exit for a lot of money. And then they retained some some equity. And when the company got sold again a, a, a few years later, they made even more money. Uh, so you can do things like that if you're smart negotiation. You can you can just create money almost out of thin air if you do this right. You're creating, remember, you're creating an asset and assets are worth something when when they're sold. So what one of the things that you always want to always keep reviewing and adjusting your goals based on what what your target is. Where, where are you trying to hit and what can we do to achieve that target? Where can we cut costs? Where can we pull growth levers to actually make this happen? There's companies out there and you're going to see in, in one of the other modules here from Scott Dietz where he he's an excellent, one of the best in the business, the Northbound Group that will show you how to do these spreadsheets and plan to hit these targets. They get all your ducks in a row. And in fact, there's even a, a here within Helium 10 in the, in the training, there's something called the exit ticket that Scott and his team put together. It goes way, way more into detail of what I'm talking about uh, here. I'm just giving you the, the general overview, the Cliff Notes version. They go into the, the minute detail of how to actually prepare to exit and what the process is like and what you need. So take a look at the exit ticket uh, it, here in, in Freedom Ticket as well. Uh, and that's going to give you some some really good information. Some of the things you need to understand when it comes to exit are understanding valuations. How do people value your business? It's typically earnings based. 
Uh, it's a, a multiplier based on your earnings. Uh, and then they add for your inventory. So if, if in this case of the, of the million dollars, with two hundred thousand dollars SDE that I've been using as an example, they'll give you the half a million bucks if it's a two point five multiplier. Two point five times two hundred thousand is five hundred. And then let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory sitting in Amazon, they'll cut you a separate check for the hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory, and so that'll be on top uh, on top of that, uh, assuming the inventory's been paid for. Also, the value ranges can vary greatly by the business size, by the channel you're selling in. You know, Amazon businesses might be worth more than a Walmart business, or the percentage that you have. If you have your own customer list or your own distribution channels or you have wholesale, uh, those kinds of things can, can make a difference. Uh, there's basically four pillars when it comes to building and selling your business. There's the risk. What is the risk to the buyer? What kind of risk are they doing? If they give you a million, uh, you know, half a million bucks, what, what, what's the risk factor? They're going to look at what's the growth potential. Can't, how, what, what can I do to put gas on this fire to grow it? Can I expand this because I've got, I got deep pockets into Europe? Uh, or Japan, or can I, uh, I know connections where I can get in to different places. If we put this into our distribution network, a direct-to-consumer, we can, we can crush it. Uh, how easily is everything transferable? How much legal mumbo-jumbo we got to go through? How, how good are the documents? How tight is all the agreements? So is it transferable uh, in, a, in a smooth manner? And what's the documentation? You know, that document vault. If you, what, do we have every T uh, crossed and every I dotted? to make sure that if something goes wrong and come, it doesn't put my investment at risk as a buyer. So those are some of the things that they look at. There, there's also um, things called the ignorance discounts. Uh, and those are things like doing proper ad backs where you may have that $200,000, but let's say you were overpaying yourself. You were paying yourself 200 grand a year as a salary. And the new buyer is like, well, um, we could hire, hire someone to do this for 80 grand a year. So they're gonna add back 120 grand. And so you're now at $320,000 on the valuation. 2.5 times 320,000 is a little bit more than half a million. Uh, that's more like 750,000 or something. So it's a big difference. So knowing how to add those things or the one-time expenses and things back that the other new buyer doesn't have to um, incur are big deals in valuation. So if you try to sell the business yourself and don't know all this stuff or haven't gone through the exit ticket here in Freedom Ticket, you may be leaving some money on the table or if you, or it's best in a lot of cases to deal with a third party that takes a small cut of the action and, and they handle all this stuff for you and they got the experience that, that you don't have. Also remember your capital gains taxes. There's going to be taxes when you sell. Uh, it, those constantly changing in the United States. If you live in Europe or somewhere else, might be different rules, but there's, there's capital gains taxes. Experts are, uh, I highly recommend, you know, northbound or quiet lights or someone like that to help you, guide you through the process, even though they take a little bit of a fee. Uh, and I, I recommend, you know, like I said, the uh, the Exopreneur's Playbook, uh, which is a book that's written by one of the guys at Quiet Light. It's a really good book. You can find it on Amazon. And take a look at the uh, the, the guidance here in Helium 10 uh, for the exit ticket uh, with, with Scott Dietz and his team. So this is something I just want to go over with you really quick. The importance of actually thinking about the end game uh, at the beginning and not figure it out halfway through like, oh, sh oh crud, I need to sell this thing. So we make a big difference in everything for you. Hope this has been helpful. We'll talk to you again shortly. And enjoy Scott's module and the other financial modules that we have here as well. Make sure you do those before you move on to section five. Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đang viết brand với USBTO, từ Helium 10, Intrigo Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé.